Hi and welcome to the Enquendo Guitars Workshop. My name is Daniel and this is the first video for my entry into the 2021 edition of the Great Guitar Build-Off. And in this episode I'm going to start by making the neck. Um, although it can be tempting to start with the body, I think the neck is probably the most important part of any build and a lot depends on how your neck turns out. So that's why I like to start with making a neck. I've got a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it in. So I made this to-do list and first I'm going to prepare this lovely flint maple and soprano wood neck blank and get it ready to be turned into a neck. And the first thing I need to do, of course, is make sure that my neck blank is nice and straight and perfectly flat and that the surface, the top surface of my neck blank is perpendicular to the laminated stripes in this neck blank. And I use my Stanley number no. 7 to flatten out and straighten out the top of the neck blank. And I use my straight edge to check if it's nice and flat and dead straight. Next step is to draw in the all important center line. And when the center line is drawn in, I mark the position of the nut and trace my template for the outline of the neck. And of course, position the truss rod so I can route the truss rod channel. And I love this Incra protractor. Great tool. Next step is routing the thrust rod channel. And I've got an adjustable jig I can clamp to the sides of my neck blank. And that allows me to route a perfect straight and centered thrust rod channel. Underneath the jig there are two angle pieces that clamp to the neck blank. And I can adjust the entire jig to be in line with the center line. And I can take my handheld router with a 6mm router bit and go back and forward until I get to the desired depth. And I route a slightly wider slot to fit the adjustment nut on the truss rod. Usually it's around 10mm. And I use some chisels to square off the ends of the truss rod channel to get a better fit. And when everything went well you have a nice fitting truss rod. And using my pencil I cut out the outline of the neck and I try to keep as close to the line as I dare. And sometimes it helps to draw in a little guideline to indicate where to start to cut. A couple of weeks ago I received this package from Chip Tate, one of my subscribers, all the way from the United States. And yeah, I was really flabbergasted to receive a gift from one of you guys. And yeah, it came with a handwritten letter. How often do you see that? Uh, thanking me for my content. And yeah, I'm hoping I keep up the good work. I'm not going to read it all the way. But what he sent me was one of these mega flush trim bits from infinity tool chip doesn't work for infinity he says but he loves these router bits so much he wanted me to give one a try so he sent one over to me to give it a go and yeah chip uh, joseph if you're watching uh, yeah i really appreciate you sending me this little gift and i'm sure i'm going to love it as well i haven't tried it before so i'm going to try it on this neck and it's a very good quality router bit, at least a very smooth finish and it's very convenient. I can now route the entire uh, thickness of the neck blank in one go. And that I can adjust the position of the guide bearing so I can route with the grain at all times. This is probably the biggest bit my router table can handle but it all went fine and the end result speaks for itself. It is a bit getting used to but I've got a perfect routed neck shape now and the only hiccup I did have uh, when routing with this bit was when transitioning 
around this little corner, but that's probably due to I'm not used to this route a bit yet. So let's continue with the neck. The next thing to do is to figure out the headstock brake angle. And I know for my necks I need to start at a certain distance from the bottom of the neck blank. And with the help of a little square at the end of the nut I can draw in the top for the headstock. And use a 15 millimeter thickness and draw in the bottom. And I can draw in the highest point for the volute in the center of the nut. And of course I can draw in the side profile for the neck now. And use a bit of masking tape to help me finalize the thickness of the headstock. And now all I have to do is follow this line with the bandsaw. And now I can use my plane to make sure this is absolutely flat. I start out with my number four Stanley to get to the correct brake angle. And then I switch to a small little block plane to make sure that headstock is nice and flat and straight. And I don't have any tear out on the flame maple. And I always immediately drill the hole for the truss rod axis. And of course test it. The neck is coming along nicely. We've got our basic shape. The truss rod is in and I've got my headstock brake angle figured out. Next step is to make the fretboard. And I've got this lovely piece of marble wood. I had never worked with marble wood before and it's said to be very tough to work with. So let's find out if I can make a fretboard out of it. I buy my fretboards at a thickness of 10 millimeters, so I have to plane it down to about 7 to 6.5 millimeters. And this is a little trick I often use to thin down stock or thin down small parts, and that's turning my spindle sander into a thicknesser by just adding the fence of my router table and with every pass I slightly adjust the fence inward so I can sand, the, in this case the fretboard, to the exact thickness I need. The only thing to keep in mind is that the fence is perfectly square to the table of the spindle sander. Next job is to cut the fret slots and I have a sneaky suspicion that cutting these fret slots in this marble wood by hand isn't going to be a fun job. One fretboard done, and as I expected, it wasn't fun. So the fretboard is slotted, 24 slots, and ready to be glued to the neck. And in the neck I already installed the truss rod and added a very thin strip of ebony veneer on top of the truss rod to both prevent glue dripping into the truss rod channel and also to prevent possible rattle when the guitar is done. So now it's time to glue the fretboard to the neck and I can just clamp it to the neck, align it with two, li two lines I drawn in perpendicular to the center line on each end, drill two guide pins, remove the fretboard, put on some glue and clamp it and let it cure overnight. So first I make sure to align the fretboard perfectly to the center line of the neck blank and then mark the positions where I can drill the guide pins so I don't drill into the truss rod by accident or be too close to the edge of the fretboard. And then I apply some masking tape to the ends uh, just to prevent glue from squeezing out, for example, onto the surface where the nut is going to sit. And then I can just replace the fretboard, use some clamping calls, 
and of course a couple of clamps. And once the glue has dried, I can cut off the overhang of the fretboard using the bench on. And I use my router table to trim the sides of the fretboard flush with the neck. And with the fretboard glued to the neck blank, it's time to cut out the outline or the side profile of this neck. Besides thickness sanding, small stock or thin parts, my spindle sander trick is also very useful to get your headstock to the correct thickness and sand the curvature at the back of the volute in the same go. And at this point I also decided to get the heel of the neck to the correct uh, thickness or close to the correct thickness just make sure it's nice, flat and square. Now with the basic shape of the neck cut out and the headstock sanded to thickness and the heel flattened, it's time to start carving and I've attached my carving jig to the workbench already and I'm going to take a variety of rasps and files, put on some music and start carving this neck. And I start by flattening the back of the neck. And once I made sure the neck is now nice and straight, I start drawing in some guidelines to help me with the carving. So the first phase I'm creating is at a 45 degree angle and I use a scraper to get it nice and tight. And then divide the newly created phase in half and do the exact same thing. And I use a scraper to get all the facets as tight as I can. And then I use a small little file and later on some sandpaper to round over the neck to the final shape. In this case, a nice little C shape. And then it's time to carve the volute and I really enjoy carving a volute. It's very relaxing, put on some music and just start carving and shaping. And besides the benefit of adding additional strength to the transition from the neck to the headstock, I think a volute just looks cool and it's very comfortable when playing. And when the volute is ready, I can of course start carving the heel of the neck. I'm done shaping the neck, the heel and the volute and yeah it's a nice C shape and in my opinion the only way to really check if a neck is good is just by touching it and feeling it and if you're not quite happy just take a very fine grit sandpaper and make small adjustments until you're happy and I'm happy. And to radius the fretboard I take my very long radius sanding beam and just keep going back and forth until the radius is in. So let's check the fretboard. Perfectly straight. And a nice 12 inch radius. We're almost there. 
I can check off a lot of items from my to-do list and I've got an almost complete neck in a single episode and if I may say so myself I think it's turning out absolutely gorgeous and it's very comfortable I wish you could feel how smooth and how nicely shaped this neck is but yeah unfortunately <laughs> this is YouTube and you can't yeah next week I will complete the neck by doing the inlay headstock veneer and of course all the fret work and then in the third episode I'll start with making the body and I can't wait to show you what I've planned for that uh, yeah I hope you liked this video and if you did yeah leave a like and let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions comments or just wanted to say hi uh, if you're new to my channel yeah consider subscribing and hitting that little notification bell so you get notified when I upload something new yeah like I said next week we'll be finishing the neck for the great guitar build of 2021 and I hope to see you all there but until then have a nice week